Today's lesson is about reproduction in vertebrates and follows the Group 12 Life Science CAP syllabus. How this video should be used as a resource to maximize efficient studying. So I'm going to be revising the work and not really explaining the work. So watch the video, but don't make summaries while you are watching the video. Because after the video, go make a summary of everything that was said in the video, because this will test how much of the work you have absorbed and what you still need to revise, revise again. So this is practicing active recall, which is a studying technique where you actively retrieve the information from your memory to test how much you know and how much you don't. Okay, then this is just the department's guidelines. Um, reproduction in vertebrates is only eight marks, so it's not a big chapter. And then all of these points I've mentioned in the PowerPoint. Okay, so fertilization. You get internal fertilization and external fertilization. And internal fertilization is when the male deposits the sperm cells inside the female's reproductive organs. And therefore fertilization occurs inside the reproductive organs of the female. And this is also an adaptation for terrestrial animals because in external fertilization, water is required. But in internal fertilization, it's for land animals because there's no water on land. So it's an adaptation for them to reproduce. And then advantages of internal fertilization is that the zygote has a better chance at survival. So we know that a zygote occurs when a male gamete and a female gamete fuse and that's what is formed, a zygote is formed. So the resulting zygote has a better chance at survival because it is retained inside the mother's body. So it's kept inside the mother's body and it's not exposed to predators. It has a parent protecting it. Then another advantage is that fertilization is more certain than external fertilization. And this is because the male deposits his sperm cells inside the female's reproductive organs. So it's more directed than whereas in egg external fertilization, the sperm is just deposited over the eggs in the environment where they are laid. Okay, then a disadvantage is that copulatory organs are required and internal fertilization occurs in birds and mammals. So they use internal fertilization to reproduce. Then external fertilization, it's when the egg cells are fertilized outside the female's body. As I said earlier, the water is required because it prevents the sperm from drying out and it also allows the sperm to swim. So the sperm use it as a medium to swim. A disadvantage is more sperm must be produced as fertilization is not as certain as internal fertilization. And like I said earlier, the sperm is just deposited over the eggs where they are laid. So it's not directed through the female's reproductive organs. And then the zygotes that are um, made are not as well predicted, protected from predators because they don't have a parent protecting them. They are just left in the environment where they are laid. Okay, so then the animals that use external fertilization are frogs and fish. Then we get to our three reproductive strategies, ovipary, ovovivipary, and vivipary. So we have three columns, how development is taking place, where development is taking place, and how nutrition is taking place. So ovipary, the eggs are laid and development takes place. Fertilization can be internal or external. And the development takes place outside the mother's body, inside the egg. So the mother lays the egg and the development takes place inside that egg, which is obviously outside the mother's body if, it ha if she's laid the egg. And then the egg hatches. Um, and the nutrition is taking place through a yolk sac that is inside the egg. Then ovovivipary, eggs are fertilized internally and are retained inside the mother's body. Then the eggs develop inside the mother's body. They then hatch and the offspring is born. So the eggs are fertilized inside the mother's body. They are kept inside the mother's body. They develop inside the mother's body. They hatch inside the mother's body and then they are born. And nutrition is also taking place through a yolk sac. And then for vivipary, the eggs are fertilized internally and development takes place inside the mother's uterus. And you can see it overlaps here quite a bit because here it says the development is taking place inside the mother's uterus 
and the offspring is born. And here, the change, the, the nutrition is now taking place through a placenta. But you can see here with ovoviviparity that it's almost an in-between stage between ovipary and vivipary because it has some qualities like being fertilized internally in common with vivipary. It's also kept inside the mother's body, develops inside the mother's body, and the offspring are also born. But it also has things in common with ovipary like the eggs that hatch and the nutrition through a yolk sac. Okay. Then the amniotic egg. This is just an enlarged picture of the egg. He has the shell, he has the chorion, it goes all the way around. This inner part that contains the allantois, the amnion, and then this is the egg yolk. Just ignore that label there. And then he has the embryo. Okay, so I've listed all of these from the outside inwards. So we get the shell, and the shell prevents dehydration and gives protection. The Chorion allows oxygen to enter through the shell to the embryo and allows the carbon dioxide that the embryo produces to exit through the shell back to the outside. So it functions in gaseous exchange. The allantois also functions in gaseous exchange, but it also stores waste that is produced by the embryo. And then the amnion is a membrane that encloses the amniotic cavity and the amniotic cavity contains amniotic fluid which protects the embryo against mechanical shock. And then the yolk sac provides nourishment for the embryo. Then we get to our two methods of development in birds, precocial and altricial development. And the features of each development method is dependent on the original environment that these birds lived in. So if these birds had many predators and a lot of food in the original environment, the offspring will use or have features of precocial development. And if the birds had an original environment with few predators and little food, their offspring will show features of altricial development. Okay, what's nice about the table is that everything that is happening on this side is not happening on this side, so it's comparative. So we can see uh, um, the offspring are well developed when they hatch, and these, these offspring are not well developed when they hatch. Their eyes are open when they hatch, their eyes are closed when they hatch. Their bodies are covered with feathers, these bodies are not covered with feathers. They are able to move soon after hatching, these are unable to move soon after hatching. They are able to feed themselves, and altricial development birds are unable to feed themselves. These are independent of their parents, and these are dependent on their parents. Okay, then to our last thing, parental care. This is just the definition of parental care, and it says ways in which parents increase chances of offspring surviving. And they do this by providing shelter, by providing food before and after birth, by protecting their young, and by providing social assistance. Okay, and that's it.